In this video, uh, I'm going to go over uh, another object. Uh, so I just uh, this is where we left off in the previous lesson. Uh, so this video is going to show you. Uh, we're going to go on down instead of doing any more drawings. Uh, we're going to go down to push buttons. Uh, so we're going to start off with uh, the different types of push buttons, and we should already know some of these right here. And uh, the two that we should know is the momentary and maintained. Uh, so these push buttons are going to be exactly that, push buttons, uh, but they will have different uh, functions. Uh, and we had these on our cabinets, a momentary and maintained. Uh, some of the ones that we don't, that we don't have, uh, and it's, they're similar in the momentary and maintained, uh, but they have different functions that only you can get on a HMI. So you're also going to have these latch, multi-state, interlocked, and ramp. Uh, the ones that we'll be doing is the momentary, maintained, uh, the multi-state, and the ramp. And I think the ones that we'll actually have lessons on and labs later will be the momentary, maintained, and ramp. That's the three that we'll be mainly focusing on. So anyways, to get into it, uh, you'll go to push button, objects, push button, and then go to momentary. And again, a momentary button is one that when you press it, it changes the state and when you release it it will go back to the original state okay so again you'll see that it says beside of it our MOM button so you know it's been selected and again you will click and you will drag okay so it's defaulted uh, to where it's automatically going to be a rectangle shape so again right here on the general you'll see two of the tabs that will be for every uh, you'll see general and common. General and common should be on every object. You should have at least those two tabs. But if you see right here under shape, it says rectangle. So you can change it to uh, any shape, you know, the three shapes that are available. And an ellipse is basically like a circle. So anyways, we'll leave it as a rectangle for now. Uh, just to get you familiar with these things in the general tab. The appearance line so what that's going to do is uh, give you a different uh, characteristics along the border of it if you'll see it's it's changing somewhat let me change this setting here so you can see a little bit better so you can see that it's making a difference in the out line of the shape so anyways you'll see that's inset raised line so right there, a line is just a line. So it doesn't matter what the border width is. You, you're not going to be able to see it any any better than... So you'll see as I go through those. And that there's all it does is changes that. And sometimes you'll see that right there a lot with, uh, with different... Uh, if you ever look at HMI projects, you'll see that people like a certain look. And there ain't a wrong way, just whichever way you like. Uh, so you'll also see that if you go to a circle, that some of those things... Uh, really don't even uh, work if you'll see that I'll change it but this it won't actually stay so it'll change and then it'll go right back that means that that object cannot uh, allow that to happen so you'll, you'll see that so I just want you to make sure that if you get into something and it's like not taking it's more than likely because of the type of object so if you say I go back to rectangle apply and then go back it will allow me to change it okay so anyways there's not no wrong way about it uh, unless I give you a specific uh, setting for it to be that's the only reason why you would need to make sure that you have it set for that but that's the border style the back style is uh, transparent so you'll see it's the back of the object so this is the border and then you're gonna have the back of the object so solid is gonna make it just solid okay and then gradient is going to give it a gradient look so again there's no right or wrong way just whatever you like or if you're asked to do something in particular then you need to be able to show that you can do that okay one of the things that I'll tell you about the appearance right, right quickly uh, is that uh, border uses back color so with that being said that a lot of times people want to change a color of a border well if you do that then you have to watch if this box is checked it will override what you select the border to be 
and I'll show you that here in a moment. Uh, well, I'll go ahead and show you now. Under states, you can actually change the back color and the border color to where they're different. But if that right here is checked, that box is checked, it doesn't matter what you change this border to, it will stay the same as the back. So uh, I'll go ahead and demonstrate. So let's just say I make the border color uh, red. Okay. See, I applied it and it's still blue. So if I go back over here, uncheck that, hit apply, now it turns red. Now, once that is unchecked, this it will look at this box and go to that, that color, whatever color it is. So anyways, just showing you that real quick. Uh, this right here is so that you can change this to, instead of a normally open push button, you can make it a normally closed push button, or you can select it for a certain value. So you can have it a zero or a one. So sometimes you may have a, a dent that you're gonna write uh, information uh, to there, and so you could actually do this, or you could do even a, even a bull, but you can uh, manipulate which state that your uh, push button starts off in. The whole time means how long you have to actually physically hold the button for it to actually recognize it. So that's 250 milliseconds, and usually I always leave that default. The touch margins will will give you uh, will change uh, the area in which you can actually touch it. So you can expand that out around the button just a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's good to do that, especially with smaller buttons, and as long as there aren't, aren't buttons really close to that one, uh, because you don't want to select the wrong uh, button uh, by mistake. Uh, so sometimes uh, you, know, you may want to do that, but I generally just try to make the buttons uh, a good size, uh, because you always want to make sure that you try to have a, the right HMI size based off you know how many objects you're going to have on there so that you don't have that issue to begin with. So normally I leave this de default, I leave this default, normally open, that there is default for me. I normally didn't change that. Every once in a while I'll unclick this and change the border color. But other than that, there, uh, most of this is set up the way that I, I would just leave it default. Okay. So now we'll go to the states tab. <clears throat> and what this means is that in state zero, meaning that when this push button is at state zero, you know, because a, a bull has a zero and a one. So with that being said, when you when it's off, it is gonna be in state zero. So when it's in state zero, if you want a back color, uh, let's just say if we want it to be a red button, or let's just say if it's off, we want it to be a start button, okay? So we want it to be that. So that means it's gonna be look like a green start button. So this means this is where you're gonna push in order to start something. So I'm gonna caption it. Captioning it is uh, going to tell you uh, where you can write in text into the object. Uh, so it's gonna be a start PB, or we, we can just say start. So right now you know exactly where to push to start something. Okay, so what uh, what we'll do is I'll show you again, uh, like we showed in some of the other videos, uh, that this right here is the fonts. Right there should be self-explanatory. If you don't like the way the font looks or you don't like the size of it, uh, now you'll see that if you get to a certain size, it should start actually putting like little asterisks in there. Oh, that was way too big. It couldn't even... You'll see little asterisks. So when you see asterisks in something like that, that means that it is, the text or something is so big that it can't even put the next letters in. So with that being said, there's two ways to, to remedy that. It's either one, make the object itself larger, like that. Double click on that, bring my properties page back out. Or uh, change your uh, font size uh, to accommodate. But uh, that's all about what you really wanted to do. Uh, again, right here, the caption color, that is the color of the lettering. So let's just say if we want to change that to black, that's how you would do that. Caption back color, I'll show you that. This right here, again, uh, will not show up uh, sometimes depending on uh, if this setting right here is transparent or solid. So you'll see behind the lettering, it does that. Now there's normally, I never see a reason to do this. Normally I would leave that transparent, but just letting you know, 
if you're not getting something to act the way that you want it to, make sure that some of this stuff right here is not turned to transparent. Okay. Uh, so normally I, I never do use that, but just letting you know, if you don't like that white color in the back of it or something like that right there, uh, you can change it to the same color the other one is or leave it transparent, whichever one that you like. Uh, you can make the caption blink and you can do word wrap. Uh, again, normally I don't fool with any of that stuff. I don't never see a reason to, for a caption blink. Uh, that would be for something to make sure that somebody's you know got their attention that here's where you push first or something like that. So if you do some kind of sequencing. Uh, anyways, alignment is exactly what it says. Uh, in the center here is going to be in the center of the object. Uh, you know, and if you go to alignment to the top and left, it's going to put it to the top and left where it starts. Again. I generally like mine towards the middle. Sometimes you might find it uh, where you want to go to the top and the middle, uh, but generally I like things to be in the center. You may find it uh, a different way that you like, and that's fine too. So anyways, uh, images are just what they are. You can actually bring uh, images such as photos or pictures of some something uh, into your uh, HMI, uh, and it'll display that. I generally stay away from that if possible. The only things I've ever used uh, images for is when I've used like a uh, the uh, hard side logo. Uh, I brought it in to some of my HMI projects just to give it, you know, a little something that's uh, I think it's kind of nice, you know, that it's something that says hard side foods and gives me something that uh, uh, tells what the page is, what this particular page is all about, and that's that's usually what I like to do. That way, that you know when you go to a page, you know what's supposed to be on that page. And w once we get into this, you'll see more details in what I'm talking about. Okay, I, so that's enough on that out there. Uh, the common tab again is how you uh, can change the size. Uh, again, if you know what sizes you like, if you want to stay kind of uniform, and you know that you want to keep them all the same size. Uh, you just type, type it in and hit apply and it'll do that. Again, if you know exactly where you want it, you can just type in how far from the top and how far from the left you want it. That's where it's going to put it. Again, do not uh, change the uh, names and don't uh, uncheck the visibility. Okay. The next thing, the one thing we haven't seen before, we hadn't seen the states yet and we hadn't seen connections. The connections is going to be uh, where it's going to be looking for in the processor. So in the PAC, which is our Compact Logics processor, uh, this is where we're going to start going and looking for tags. And we're going to go to a tag database, which right now I just got the, the system stuff uh, loaded in there because uh, I don't have a shortcut built for my HMI project yet to tell me what processor to look for. So right now it's just going to have system tags. Uh, so anyways, it's going to populate a few systems tags that are automatically generated and those tags right there you know you could bring in but uh, for now you won't see any of the tags that's uh, available in a, in a project to uh, have a project that I've tied to. So anyways this right here is the tags that we make just like in our PAC when our, we make our ladder logic this is where we're gonna what value where are we gonna write, read and write this value from or to so this is where so let's just say if you tie, if you make a uh, XIC uh, with the tag uh, start PB uh, then this right here is you would click on this it bring up this tag database and it would come down over here with a list of items and you'd click on those and it, or click online and then over here it populate everything that was online so then you would go pick the one that you wanted the start PB select it and what it's going to do is every time you push this button it's going to update the value of that in your program so that's all it's going to do uh, and you can make an indicator tag so where that uh, when you press this it turns the push button on and makes your XIC uh, closed and then you could have the indicator tag uh, indicate basically that's when it's going to change uh, this status here uh, from a zero to a one now so that would be here and once we get into labs, uh, I'll be able to show you more in detail of that. Uh, but that's basically uh, everything you need to know about a momentary push button. Uh, so I will break these videos up into uh, video, smaller videos so that you'll be able to go back and listen to uh, information about each individual type of push button. Uh, that way, uh, if you don't have to go through all the video to find one particular piece. So uh, be looking for the next video. 
and I'll see you then.